Hello, my darlings. This is a, a session or the session dedicated to the chakras, the seven chakras. And again, it is chakras, not chakras. This is for those who want to get accustomed to their meanings, and not only, obviously. The thing is that there are more chakras in the human body. There are not just seven, but the seven chakras are the most important ones. They are the main channels of energy, the main pools of energy. I have another video about what chakras actually are, because I find it better to understand the nature of what a chakra truly is prior to understanding each one in particular. Now, in particular, the seven main chakras are on the trajectory of your spinal column, which is your pillar not just a physical pillar for your body, it is also a pillar for your energy body, your subtle body. And the thing is that just like the sun, just like light gets fragmented or segmented into the colors that we see in this human spectrum, of visual perception because there are more colors there are way more colors it's just that humans only see a number of them like it's not just about the other species on this planet species from other planets they see more far more colors <laughs> now just like the segments of light as colors, so it is that you, the soul, have not... I, I, I don't want to say segments here. Have, you have certain pools of energy, each one governing a certain area of your life, a certain area of the physical manifestation of you, the soul into the body and once again for everyone to understand it's not about your soul no you don't have a soul you are a soul you are a soul who has a body i'm tired of hearing everyone saying our souls your soul whatever no i am a soul i am a soul incarnate in a physical body the physical body is just a vehicle for interacting with the physical manifested world. And yes, not just a vehicle, the term vehicle is not to be understood too technically here. It's also a thing of enjoying the physical body and the physical world. But this is a thing of identity. You're not a body. And you're not a human, you're a soul, period. And now when you come incarnate into this physical manifestation, you have layers of expressing yourself, of layers of penetrating this manifestation. When you come incarnate into the body, you come incarnate from the top, from the highest chakra, and you reach boom, 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 to the lowest chakra, which is called the root chakra. And that chakra connects you to the earth element, the physical reality, this physical world. It is the chakra of the, the earth element. Its color is red, because red is the densest color. And the name says it, it's the root chakra. It is connected to your ancestry, if you want to connect to them, of course. <laughs> it is connected to 
to blood, to power. This is something that most people don't understand. I see a lot of people talking about the root chakra and they call it the chakra of survival. No fucking shit, what the fuck? You're not here to survive. You're here to thrive. And you cannot ascend, properly ascend, because this is the thing. I told you that when you come incarnate, you go from the top to the root chakra. And then when you have your awakening, and not just when you have your awakening, thing is that you're supposed to ascend your energy back to the top, to the highest chakra daily. Not just when you have your awakening. Yes, when you have your awakening, I suppose many of you already know about this. There is that thing called Kundalini rising. The Kundalini is basically your energy rising back to the higher awareness, which is the higher chakra. So in this way, you connect, you reconnect to who you truly are, which I explained in the first part of the video, a soul. You dissolve the false ideas of identity that most humans have. And you remember the fact that you are a soul prior to everything. And this thing of the Kundalini rising is not supposed to happen, as I said, just, just when you awake, just when you have your spiritual awakening. No, the yogis do it every day. And this is the secret of yoga to fucking raise your Kundalini every day. This is the secret of keeping you spiritually sane. And I do emphasize this term spiritually sane because every kind of insanity starts from a spiritual insanity and this fucking world is so spiritually insane that it's just, whoa, it's whoa. It's the hardest world to come incarnate into. So, Raising your Kundalini daily requires a proper understanding of, first of all, as I said, who you are and second of all, your chakras. Because your Kundalini goes through all the chakras back up to the highest. Which is... And with that, for this reason, it is highly important to understand the nature of those chakras, starting with the root. The root is not for survival. Yes, it is about that as well. But do you want to survive or do you want to live? Because these two things are very different. There's one thing to just survive and another thing to, to live, to have a life, to really live, to be alive. The root chakra, essentially, the, the highest manifestation of the root chakra is power, being power. Thing is that it is a masculine chakra, if we are to talk about the masculine, feminine, masculine, feminine, masculine, feminine essences of the chakras. I talked about this in the previous video in the playlist about chakras. There are two perceptions of chakras as being masculine and feminine. One goes with the root chakra being masculine, the following feminine, the following masculine, the following feminine, and so on. And the other perception says that the lower chakras are feminine and the upper chakras are masculine. However way you resonate with this, it's the way you resonate with it. Which one is correct? Both. So, whether you perceive it as masculine, feminine, as both, doesn't matter, is the chakra of power. It's power. This is the vital thing. And think of it, even like most people who talk about power, who talk about governing, who talk about all of that stuff, and they, let's say they talk about this on YouTube and they prepare thumbnails for their YouTube videos. They use the color red. Guess why? Red is the densest color, as I said. It evokes blood. It evokes the nature of living. 
It evokes power. This is what red is. It's blood. So this is the root chakra. It is power. And you cannot do anything without power. And the vital thing about power, the vital thing to realize about power is that it is personal. It is not to be imposed over another. It is not to be... <laughs> How most people were trained into perceiving power, power over others. No, that's false. That's a falsity. That's not power. That's a, a false perception of power. Because it makes you think that you're supposed to go grab power for, from external sources, from a fucking official title, which gives you il, il, illusionary power over others. No, power is not over others. Power is personal. You have your own fucking throne with you. It is called the root chakra. You don't need official titles, you don't need anything to be in power. Because you are power. It's your first chakra. Let it be known for fucking everyone. You are power. It's your first chakra. This is essential. The first element you start with when you ascend is power. Once again, when we come incarnate, we descend into the body and then when we have our spiritual awakening and having a spiritual life, we continue to ascend and ascend and ascend and ascend daily and every, in every moment. So, starting with power. Then, the second chakra, its color is orange. For many people, this is known as the seat of the Divine Feminine and for good reason. Now, I should also mention the physical positions of the chakras. Yes, they are about the subtle body, but they are positioned in certain areas of the physical body. The root chakra is in the area of the sexual organs. And all of the three lower chakras deal with sexuality. All of them. It's not just one of them, no. The root chakra, the sacral chakra, and the solar plexus chakras, these lower three chakras, all of them deal with sexuality. <laughs> and power to create. This is the thing. From power, from personal power, you get to the next chakra, which is about creation. Power to create. It is creation in the feminine way of creation. It is in the area of the womb, where we as women have our womb. And for you guys, it's similarly like right below the navel it's there and think of it how many of you when you were working out or i don't know doing anything that you were exercising those muscles of the abdomen weren't you feeling slightly aroused or a little bit more than just slightly it is because of this it is because you have energy sexual energy centers there, which are these chakras. And the fact that the sacral chakra is right where the womb is, says a lot. It's, it's creation. It's... thing is that the three lower chakras describe kind of a, an egg in your energy body. And in this egg, the center is the sacral chakra, where the baby is hold is held sorry is held in the body when we are pregnant and it's not just the physical nourishment that the physical body gives to the baby it's also the spiritual nourishment that the, the energy body gives to the baby 
And that's why it's there at the sacral chakra. Sacral chakra is also about pleasure, about just enjoying, enjoying your life. Remember what I said in the beginning with enjoying your physical body, enjoying this manifestation, enjoying being incarnate. Also, that sang is connected to the sacral chakra. Doesn't this make sense? Think about oral sex, <laughs> oral pleasure. And also when you eat, you feel a lot of pleasure using your tongue. <sighs> Dancing is one of the things that are in this dimension of the sacral chakra. And it makes sense, especially when you, with those kind of dances, you know, when you move your hips like that, that's a powerful way of activating this chakra. <sighs> I'm getting a little bit off. It's, it's marvelous. And it is very feminine in dimension. Like this chakra, the dimension of, of this chakra is feminine for sure. <laughs> now, the next chakra, I would stay and talk a, a lot more about the sacred chakra because it, as I said, it's all about pleasure and the more you stay with this energy, the more ah, mm, you enjoy life and you want to create. But the thing is that this is where the next chakra comes in, the third chakra. The solar plexus chakra. This is the masculine equivalent of the sacral chakra. Because this is the masculine way of creation, which is manifestation. It is called the solar plexus chakra for a reason. Oh, by the way, the sacral chakra is associated with the element of water. Makes a lot of sense. Now the next chakra, the solar plexus is yellow and it is associated with the element of fire. Fire is masculine. It is a masculine element. It is called the solar plexus chi child <laughs> chakra. <laughs> I was thinking about, I, I told you, creation, all of that. So think of the sun, what does the sun do? The sun gives life to everything around it, to every planet and every other life form on those planets. So does your solar plexus. Your solar plexus is at the stomach level. It is where the stomach is. And those yogis who practice yoga for quite long periods, they get to such levels and this is for real, it's not just fantasy without, uh, without reality, no, it's for real. They can get to a certain level where they don't need food anymore. Why? Because they have activated their solar plexus chakra to that level where their solar plexus truly functions like a sun. The sun doesn't need food. The sun gives life just like that because the sun is life, is consciousness, is light. Fire, which is the highest manifestation of fire. The sun is the highest manifestation of fire. And this, being able to sustain yourself just like that without needing any food, is the highest manifestation of this chakra or one of them, one of the highest. I would say the highest because in this way, you consume nothing. You don't need anything. Like you don't, you're not part of the natural cycle anymore. You don't need food, any kind of food. Yogis don't eat meat anyways. So they are not anymore in the dense cycle of karma. But even when you don't eat meat, you still eat. And 
you still receive from nature. And if you don't also give to people, to society, to or back to nature, you can plant or something like that. If you don't also give, you have unconsumed karma. But when you don't take at all, guess what? <laughs> this is the thing with this chakra. It is also, as I said, about manifestation. Whatever you want to manifest, this is how you manifest through the dimension of the solar plexus chakra. And the thing is that it's not just abstract association with the elements that the chakras have. The sacral chakra, as I said, is, it is connected to water. Well, what does the baby bathe in while he or she is in the womb? There's a liquid there, a nourishing liquid. The solar plexus chakra is connected to the element of fire. What do your stomach, the, the grammar, 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 sorry, I'm not English by the way. What do the, the juices in your stomach do? They burn. They burn the food which you ingest. That's how you digest it because it is burnt in the stomach. It is decomposed. <sighs> so this is the thing and your stomach is highly as, like the stomach and the solar plexus chakra is also the dimension of your health. The healthier of a solar plexus you have, the healthier you are. It, it, it's where things get purified. Think of fire, fire purifies. It is the most purifying of the elements. Whatever goes through fire, it is purified entirely. There's nothing but ash left of it, if there's anything left. Water just, just cleans, it bathes, it cleans, but it doesn't transform as fire does. Fire just, just fire. So, again, health. Whatever you want to, to purify, it is there through the dimension of the solar plexus. And it's also about your consciousness. But this gets advanced with the following throat chakra. But up until the throat chakra, we have the heart chakra. The heart chakra is right here <laughs> at the chest level the area of your heart it is called the heart chakra and it is called the heart chakra because well as i said it is at the in the area of your heart but on the center and it is about emotions it is love it is the dimension of love and your hands are an extension of both the heart chakra and the throat chakra. And you will understand why when I get to the throat chakra as well. But your heart chakra is, as I said, love, emotions. Whomever you care for, yourself, first of all. <laughs> you gotta love yourself, first of all, and only then can you truly love anyone else. When you understand that others are you, literally. Because there's only one being throughout existence. Your heart space is your heart space. I don't think I need to, to describe this any further. It's the heart space. It's the center. It's, its color is green or pink. Depends whichever one you resonate more with. And I, I will talk about the meaning of the colors of the chakras in another session, another video. But whether you resonate with green or pink, the heart chakra. 
And if you want crystals for the chakras, go by colors. It is by colors, literally. Red crystals for the root or black crystals. Orange crystals for the sacral and also orange reddish crystals for the sacral yellow crystals for the solar plexus and green or pink crystals for the heart chakra and the more open of a heart chakra you are the more open of a heart chakra you have the more you can feel that's why when you hug someone, you feel that the thing is that you unite your heart chakras and they communicate. This is so beautiful. Be careful who you connect with in all ways, starting with sexual. Now, I'm gonna have a pause for hydrating myself. Okay. The next chakra is the throat chakra, blue. <laughs> this is speaking, it, it's, I think it's logical. And this is another thing, it also governs logic, the mind, reason. I said about the solar plexus that it is about consciousness, discernment, but the throat chakra is the expansion of that. It's knowledge, it's communication, it's truth, integrity. And when you talk, you gesture a lot. So this is why your hands are an extension of both the heart space and the throat chakra. <sighs> it's more like the, the heart chakra goes like this like on the on this the, the lower part of the hands and the the throat chakra energy goes on the surface of the hands the, the seen part of the hands and oh by the way you have chakras in your palms as well but as I said, that's another topic. We're talking about the seven main ones on the tra ah, on the trajectory of your spinal column. So, logic, reason, mind, consciousness, truth, communication, speaking. Also, no, no, no. I was about to say telepathy, but telepathy is about the third eye. So, yeah, this is the throat chakra. It's marvelous. I love it. I love all of them. <laughs> now, the third eye chakra, this is the most popular for many. <laughs> the third eye chakra is very much internal. And it is the mystical third eye. You do have an inner eye. Not like the physical ones, duh. <laughs> but you do have an inner eye with which you see. You can see yourself, you can see your energy body, you can see anything that transcends the physical world. Remember what I said in the beginning, when you come incarnate, you access the physical body, you merge with the physical body by descending into it through the chakras. Now, this is one of the higher chakras. So, this is one of the least dense chakras, one of the lightest chakras. Its color is purple. Purple, out of all colors, is the one... Mm, is the lightest color and it's mm, many times associated with divinity and spirituality a lot <laughs> with the third eye you can see unseen worlds worlds unseen by the physical eyes 
those people who see spirits, who see entities which others don't, they have an open third eye. And I also read that some people with an open third eye can see colors which are not seeable by the human eyes. Remember what I said in the beginning about colors. So it's marvelous. You, when you have a vivid, an open third eye chakra, you have vivid dreams and prophetic dreams. An open third eye chakra means being able to channel. Hope you have. I hope you have seen channelings and heard channelings and seen readings, tarot readings or divination readings. Third eye chakra. That's with the third eye chakra. It's intuition. Also, the solar plexus chakra also governs intuition, but a more bodily type of intuition. The third eye chakra governs the more subtle type of intuition, the more non-tangible type of intuition. Like, there are moments when your body just tells you no, or it tells you yes. That's more like the solar plexus type of intuition. But when you feel it, kind of like in the mind, but in the higher mind, in the less logical mind, that's the third eye type of intuition. And coming back to the masculine feminine nuances of the chakras, we said the heart space is feminine, throat is masculine, consciousness, okay? Now this is feminine. Because through this, you, you, you see the unsee unseen. It's a receiving chakra, receiving knowledge. Feminine energy is the receiving energy. Masculine is the, the, the energy which gives. And feminine energy is the energy which receives from the masculine. So, the third eye chakra is very much feminine and able to receive from the higher mind of the non-incarnate and the cosmic consciousness able to receive messages from there whether those messages be it, it also rules the clairs I was about to say whether those messages be clairvoyant, clairaudient, claircognizant, clair whatever there are more clairs Clairvoyance, you see things. Clairaudient, you hear things. Claircognizant, you just know. You receive them as knowledge. Clairsentient, you feel. Like, again, I'm talking about divination here. When you have divination readings, many readers may express themselves as I feel this talks about this. Like when they receive, when they look at the, at the card or at a rune or at a divinatory message there, some would say, I see, I see whatever they see there, or I sense, I feel whatever the message is, or they may say, I hear, or stuff like that. It's about the clears. The clears, all of them are linked to one of the senses. So this is kind of like the, the dimension of the third eye. Now, the crown chakra. The crown chakra is both feminine and masculine because once you reach the crown chakra it is the union of who you are you as who you are, the soul are both masculine and feminine whether when you come incarnate in a, in a lifetime you choose to express more of the masculine energy and in another lifetime you choose to express more of your feminine energy and to expand 
either one of those or both. Now, there's also a thing of once you reach a certain soul evolution, you're able to come incarnate in two different bodies at the same time. This is for real, this is what twin flames are. Literally a soul being incarnate in two different bodies, one expressing, or, or better said, one being the divine feminine of that soul and one being the divine masculine of that soul. But they are one, one soul incarnate in two bodies. This is the nature of, of twin flames. And every soul is able to access that at a certain point in their evolution. And the crown chakra connects you to the cosmic consciousness, connects you to the non-physical, the non-manifest, connects you to the higher realms, connects you to yourself, the non-incarnate part of you, your multi-dimensionality, your lifetimes on other planets, your lifetimes in other dimensions, your lifetimes in other timelines, your lifetimes in many other areas, or just in, in this timeline as well, whether it be past lifetimes or maybe even future lifetimes, depends. It's, it's, it's a lot. It connects you to, to everything. Imagine the crown chakra like the crown of a tree, you know, with, with branches extending and through those branches you can, you are connected, as I said, to the higher realms. <sighs> okay, so this has been the session about the seven chakras. These are the main seven chakras. Oh, by the way, there's an eighth extra one, which is your aura. Your aura is the eighth chakra. I suppose you, you already know, like, you already know about aura. You probably heard it in many places. It's a field, an energetic field surrounding you, describing your energy, yourself. It's the field that surrounds your light body. That's why when you have a strong energy, a strong aura, you radiate. And it's in such a world as the nowadays earth, it is vital to have an impenetrable aura. <laughs> because when you go out for a walk on the streets, you don't want all those energies to penetrate your field. And now with the crown chakra, its color is white. And above it is light. <laughs> and yes, many of the star seeds have talked about upper chakras, meaning you have chakras in many other places in existence. Like you have a chakra which is not necessarily above your physical body at this time, but it is in another solar system where you've also been incarnate or in another galaxy you've also been incarnate. For most, it is in their solar system of origin when, where they first came incarnate and so on. But this is only if you feel it, if you feel to go on that journey and discover all of those. But first, it's, it's about your seven chakras and the eighth as well. And then obviously, I do encourage you to extend yourselves and expand, 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 and get to know yourselves, your multidimensionality. But this is the thing, those chakras in other dimensions, whether those dimensions be, as I said, other solar systems, other galaxies, other dimensions, other universes, you must first access your union, which is your crown. Because this is what I said, connects you to 
your other dimensions, your multi-dimensionality as a creative being in the span of all existence. I love you so much. Please do tell me how the session was like, how you found this information, this knowledge, how much it helped you. I appreciate, uh, appreciate the feedback. I love you so much. Expand. <laughs>